Come children, let me tell you a story. They called me a name, and I knew it wasn't mine, but somehow it belonged to me. They called me a name, and I knew it wasn't mine, but yet still somehow I answered. And like deja vu, I have heard it all before. They called me from every friend's mouth, exclaimed my name by those I cared nothing about, insulted me in my face by those who wore my very same face, followed me in the streets like a stray dog looking for a brand new master. I, 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 I mean master. They called me, they called me, they called me, nigga! Expensive designer shoes, heavier than what my wallet can pay. Pants lower than a preschooler's education. Don't care what these elders have to say. I have seen death so many times from dues niggas forgot to pay. I have seen their spirits lift from their bodies like water on a hot summer day. So nigga, you better step back, back. Because my Glock is always ready to attack. Are the ones who disobey even if they look just like me. The core of the streets is what I live by. Where the white line separates the two black sides. So don't you backslide, cause you would slip on that bloody brick road. For the only test you are allowed to pass is a statistic. So study well on a quick fix that they have convinced you will fix this in a realm where bodies lay when angels and demons come to play. <gasps> the crowd is stunned. The questions have only just begun. Would Akil Phillips' life been saved if he knew the Samsung? Would he even make it to 21? There is a curse on all young black ones. If one can call to someone and no one can come, then something is seriously wrong. We are not strong. If two cannot become one, so don't be mistaken because masters may make mistakes in their masterpieces. But please, Make peace once your mistakes are made Before the Pied Piper's price is paid Trust me, there ain't no luxury in poverty And he loves the sight of company So please, don't be fooled Unshackled chains are being locked again Locked by the men who conceptualize them they send negative energies our direction, and with open arms, we welcome them. Black businesses cannot thrive because we turn our backs on them. Black we need to teach more love, less hate, more arguments. When we communicate, St. Peter, he has enough of our people waiting at his gate. Do you remember that time? When royalty sat on the crown of our heads. And we will look into the mirrored water that streamed our beauty into the sea of certainty that God made no mistake when creating thee. Oh, how lovely was the song of joyful noises, spiritual chants, ancient rhythms. I've looked up into the skies and I'm seeing the lights that shown constellations that wanted my tongue to manifest. You who were born from royalty and you who were free from slavery, never did you think that six letters would have so much hurt, cause so much pain. But words have power. Be careful of what you call one another. Be careful of what you remind each other. And if it's one thing, you must remember that you are not a nigger.
Well, <laughs> greetings all and welcome to the Afro Trini View. We are back, back, back. Blessed, blessed night, right, everybody. I drip down in my Caribbean experience, so you're watching it. Hot. Yeah, well, they know, I'm, you know. Yeah. Um, tonight we are joined by Mr. Kenson Laudat. I, I can't remember the, um, the Orisha name, so you will introduce yourself. Um, my name is Kenson Laudat. Mm -hmm. um, my Orisha name or my Ifa name is Ifa Sayo, Ifa Shola Tinomo. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, tonight we are discussing one of the most sought after, or not sought after, one of the most tiptoed around yeah, topics. Yeah. Um, in our community, in our as community, African people, as, as black people. people, right? The, the N word. So, we would have been reached out to by Mr. Laudat, um, and he would have asked to utilize the show as a springboard to come back into the spoken word space, uh, back into the performance space. So, yeah, that, put, that piece was amazing, my. So, um, Tell me a little bit about you, mm -hmm. what you just do, and how uh, you end up into the spoken word and to actually do pieces like this. Um, I started by being influenced by Tyler Perry's For Colored Girls. Right. I saw poetry done in a particular way that it, ha it has never been done before. Right. At that point in time, you know, when you're growing up in the Caribbean, you know rhymey, rhymey poetry. And I didn't really take to that very much, but when I saw that, I was like, I wanted to do that. And it took the death of one of my friends mm. that just spewed so much rage through me that I sat down and I wrote my first spoken word called Angry. Mm. And then I, and I, I just wanted to utilize my talent to bring and make it be like it's activism for me. So it's not about being a great poet in the sense of I want to be the best out there and the competition I'm going for. Mm -hmm. It was just strictly activism for me. Right. And um, lo and behold, my first year um, in the poetry how slam. Long, how long ago that was? That was about six years now. Right. And I ended up on um, papers mm -hmm. and the comments were... Mr. Laudat so enraged with the controversy and the downfall of the country that he uses, he utilized um, spoken, spoken word, word to, to get yeah, it out. Yeah. But um, I didn't know I was going to become the black poet, meaning all of my content that I performed since then has always been um, strictly black. Right. And what made me um, come to that was I looked into the literature of Trinidad and Tobago, and I didn't see anything that told me I was beautiful, or I was handsome, or I was strong, and I was powerful. I didn't see anything like that. Mm. And I have, I have always been in a position, in a leadership position, so people often listen to when I speak. Right. And then I was just like, well, probably this is my calling. You can go into a poetry place and anyone could touch on a topic, but these are not just topic to me. Yeah. This is my truth. This is my history book to my country. The one that they don't often teach us about, mm. which you'll get in. <laughs> and this is my way because I built a very good name for myself in the arts. So everyone knows Kenton Laudat, and there ain't any other Laudat in Trinidad and Tobago. So when you hear the name, you know who you're, who right. you're speaking of. Right. And it was my way of doing activism because there are still lots of things that are swept under the rug in our country mm -hmm. that we are failed to address, the N word being one of that, right. and so many other things. So this was just my way of saying, okay, I have the gift. I have a listening ear of many, many persons, and especially in the Ifa, Orisha, and African community. Yeah. And the title is not that bad, <laughs> to be quite honest. It's not that bad. Well, they come in the right space and place. Great, yeah. You know, um, <laughs> what, what, what is obviously from here in the piece, mm -hmm. where you get that, that take from in terms of the derogatory nature, the N word. And because for me, I have um, I grew up in my formative years listening to rap music. Right. And the N word is a major part of it. Mm -hmm. All right. 
And I saw nothing with it. I had no problem with it. Um, there even was a time when I had it thinking, well, them fellas could use that word to make money. I know vex for them. Mm -hmm. But as, as we go forward, part of going forward, it's, it's San Kufa, according to we, uh, we, we family from Ghana, mm -hmm. is looking back now. Mm -hmm. I could find great writers and great rhymers in this rap game and hip-hop game that never use them kind of words. Agreed. Now people are showing you the skills and the diversity by making a whole album with no curse words on it. Agreed. Bad tracks. So it starts to make me look over my position yeah. on the N-word now. Well, I personally do use it to refer to my thing. One of my t-shirts that I produce mark 100% God, 0% nigger. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know? But what, what, what give you that mindset to not want to use that word? Well, it all started with me. I grew up in a biracial home. Um, um, my mother is um, French Creole and my dad is African. And I grew up in a family where, I grew up on my mother's side of the family, so what you saw was a lot of fair skin, long hair, whatnot. I unfortunately was not the, um, I unfortunately was the black sheep of the family. Mm -hmm. And I think my mother saw me hurting and she could not teach me how to love myself because I don't think she was taught anything about us. Um, so she, she directed me to watch a lot of BET-centric black entertainment um, move, um, um, televisions. Mm -hmm. And then I started to do research. And then at a young age, I was um, learning about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and all these type of persons. So mm -hmm. from a young age, it was embedded to me by these elders to um, not use that word. And then the thing is, <coughs> we do not know our history. So things that are supposed to affect us don't affect us. Mm -hmm. Let us look firstly at where this word originated from. Mm -hmm. It is the Latin word for black, and that word is pronounced niger, mm -hmm. N-I-G-E-R. Mm -hmm. Now, before slavery started, this word was used to describe, because you know, Often at times, for most people, history starts at slavery. Hmm. They do not address the kings and queens of Africa. They do not address Mansa Musa. They don't address the Moors that went to Europe and towards civilization. So what you get is that this is where you are from. And when they go to that part, what title do we have? Mm -hmm. Nigger. Mm -hmm. Now, this word was used to describe just our skin color, similarly to when the Spaniards describe us as Negro, Negro, yeah. which yeah, is yeah. N-E-G-R-O, -E yeah. right? And we, up to this day, I don't think most people know, when we refer, I'm a Negro, I'm a Negro, you just put in your own little twist on it because we have been colonized by so many different, different powers people, yeah. that the word differently, you know, it differs, yeah. right? So before slavery started, it would have been a common word. Mm -hmm. When slavery started in 1619, it was already popular to use. Now, I want to... Put out there that time and the time of 1775 when the American Revolutional, Revolutionary War occurred. Now, when you look at from 1619 to 1775, you get a time span of 156 years. Mm -hmm. Now, when you understand why people go to Africa and what was the purpose of them getting slaves. It was ample time for them to inaugurate enough um, social and, and emotional and psychological stratagem to suppress us. Mm -hmm. So where does this word take pre um, precedence? Aside from they using that word to compact all the negatives that we are, on that battlefield, the Europeans who came to fight against the Americans saw you bring in African American to fight us. Mm -hmm. Now, this word has done widespread about these people. So, technically, you bring lessers to fight we. That, that is the best you could do. Mm -hmm. So, they use it to taunt the Africans that were fighting. And that is when it more so took precedence to degrade someone. From there, mm -hmm. we go into understanding that the word went from N-I-G-E-R to N-I-G-G-E-R, which is the disrespectful version of the word. Right. Now, after going through that process, 
I guess the question would be, why does this word have so much power? Mm -hmm. Well, we are in a position where for 400 years we have been beaten, we have been chained, we have been hung, we have been abused, Rinsed. all the worst that you experimented on mm. with, gruesomely. And then one word just holds all of that pain. So when you say the word, you're not just saying it to say, oh, you're black. You're saying it is used as a inferior complex. And for those who do not understand what an inferior complex is, mm -hmm. it is when you allow someone to think, it's a psychological um, depressive state, where you allow someone to think that no matter what you do, no matter what gifts you have, no matter what good you have, you are nothing. Mm -hmm. So every time you use that word, that is equivalent to me saying, I can kill you like my ancestors did, I can rape you like my ancestors did, I can murder you, I can thief your children, I can sell you like my ancestors did, and you can't do nothing. So who am I to go out there and speak as if I have no idea as to what this is? And you can't blame them because they don't know. Yeah. Because this history is not being taught. Mm -hmm. I did history in school, and what they teach us, the modules is very, very far. It's the furthest thing away from telling me what I am and who I am to be. Right. The modules go first people, <laughs> then they go to, um, I'm trying to get this right, first people, then they do slavery. But the slavery that they teach is black people being the machines for the popular the product, the sugar, cotton. Um, cotton, and tobacco. Right. Then we go to US and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. No, sorry, re revolutionary votes. Then we go to US and the Caribbean, and then something else I can't really remember. But what level of history is that? That's secondary school. All right, hear what? <laughs> Before we go any further, mm -hmm. let's take a little break, sure. and we'll be right back, right? about opening the black man's mind, all about reminding us as how beautiful we are, for the beer of fire, yeah, yeah. Oh, the clothing line features t-shirts, checks, polos and shirts, oh, tashiki, lady v-neck, lady tank top and baby jeans, yeah, dresses and cotton bags and hats and many more, oh, oh, and the new big and experience. So yes. we're back all year. <laughs> uh, in this topic here, um, the reason why I'd ask you what level of history was that, because it seems that they refine it a little more from when I did history in school in 1996 okay. as a CXE subject, Same. but it didn't have, as you say, modules, yeah. okay. right? Um, and all I did in history that uh, was, all I remember, slavery. slavery. That's all I remember from history. I mean... I'm glad, eh? Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm glad is because I could look back at that as the catalyst that sent me into African spirituality, that sent me into doing the clothing line that is due to... Okay. I could look back at that, that thing I had to write now. Right. But Mutabaraka, the Jamaican, you know him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mutabaraka, the Jamaican dub poet, always say to correct our people, uh, African history didn't start with slavery. Okay. Slavery interrupted. African history, because right. Dr. John Henry Clark, you know that name? Yes. 
Dr. John Henry Clark, one of our great scholars, he always tell us, that, always used to tell us that we was in, if by the way, how did this come the time and that 13 or 14 dynasties in Egypt before Europe had a building with a window in it. Hmm. Right? You know, yeah, he mentioned Africans leaving Africa and going. And it, it's so hidden, but in plain sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're leaving and reaching places like Spain. And, and a simple thing. Do like, we don't like to talk, we like to tiptoe, as they say. Agreed. Teaching them to be regularly and thing. Because mm -hmm. it's not a... Now, today we have an inferior complex, and this is where we have to understand that the 400 year process. If certain religious bodies could tell you, give away a child for seven years, and we program them in that seven years, can you imagine what 400, 400 years, years, especially 200 and something of like that, being active, aggressively active in the programming? Imagine what that do. Hmm. Now we're perpetual. Mm -hmm. Now we passing on them things to each other. You know? yeah. Unconsciously. Which is well, the most you know the sad thing about it? Of course, it's plenty of it is unconscious. But to me today, we have too much information to just leave it at unconsciously. Yeah. We have some people today are willing slaves mm -hmm. and are willing niggers. Mm -hmm. Today. So that's why when I listen to it and I like the way... Um, you put the children and you call them to tell them a story now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But tell me, where is the reception <laughs> to, to that now in spaces and certain spaces and places? Surprisingly, there is, it was actually one of my... Okay, so in the space that we can control, yeah. it's received well. well. Yeah. But this is the second time I performed that piece. Ah. Because yeah. nobody else <laughs> wants to put I it on their it. platform. So, well, we, why, why, as you say, from the time you tell me, this is the second time you perform that piece. Yeah. I don't have that mind anywhere. And say that one of my things is I would like you to do a high quality video of that. And share, let me share that on social media. Most definitely. Because we, we underestimate how influential we are in Trinidad and Tobago, right? Agreed. Um, in reggae music, in the origins of reggae music, mm -hmm. you will hear them talking about of course, we Jamaican brothers is get mad. Mm -hmm. That is how our Trinidadian involved in that. Yes, yes. yes. In hip hop, there are several Trinidadians mm -hmm. close to the scene. Yeah. In things like the American civil rights movement, and think we already know it. Oh, we were yeah. the movers yeah. and shakers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. who is to say that this in spark back that conversation on that word outside of Trinidad and Tobago? The thing is, with my pieces, unfortunately for our people, because the education system um, did not do us much good, mm -hmm. especially as African people. Now, the education system might be the third best in the Caribbean, if it is my research, um, if I recall correctly. But for us as a people, it didn't do much because we emphasize on utilizing and um, demanding that maths, English, and science is mandatory. but if it's one thing I understand is that these are the day-to-day -day works of life. Mm -hmm. But what is giving you integrity? What is molding you with um, proper morals and values? Now, you would think that if it is we have proper morals and values, the country might be in a better state. Now, if it is you know your history, you would know where you came from. You yes. would understand what our forefathers did. Yes. Um, when you study the story of Mansa Musa, he did not keep the wealth for himself. Mm -hmm. He traveled and he built tajas all over. He opened libraries, schools, whatnot. Um, the stories of Shaka Zulu protected his people amongst all means, mm -hmm. protected his people. I know why I think that, I just want to cut mm -hmm. you. I know why I think that, especially that Shaka Zulu story is really important because it is never showy the Africans that revolt. Mm -hmm. And not just revolt, there's never show the Africans that defended because he didn't revolt. Yes. He actually defended, defended his people, agreed. For a long time. A yeah. long, long, long time. So they don't show us these things because why? Our DN our DNA is still their DNA is still very much present in every one of us. So if it is 
as spiritual people. Let, let me talk as spiritual people. Yeah. We understand. Oh, sorry. I didn't want to. No, no, no. I didn't cut it across. As spiritual people, Ifo yeah. people, we understand it only takes a call to bring back all of that in the present. And I think they understand that too. And I, of course they That's do. That's why they focus so hard on So hard. Yeah. So they know what could happen. I remember one of my teachers told me that if African people know to come together and vibrate, this entire world will shake. And it is these oh, things sure. that they are going to try their best Secret. to cut across. Yes. This is where the word comes in because word have power. power. And if you think, what gives a word power? What makes a word powerful? Three things. Longevity, impact on society, and... Um, sorry, longevity, impact on society, and history. Mm. And this word has all, all of them. that. All three. <laughs> all three. Because it is still present today. today. And you are what you are called. Or you are what you call yourself. Hmm. Why wasn't it not popular to call each black brother kings and queens? Hmm. It took me 25 years to know that the most um, expensive liquid is found in my skin. Melanin. Melanin. To equate it, if gold is a dollar, melanin is 300. <laughs> My children will be worth $19 million at birth. Now, how d does it work that a woman or a man and a man can go into a beauty supply store and buy cake soap to bleach their skin? Hmm. How is it that we can go into a doctor's office and cut off our nose and and, 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 and and remove parts of our bodies and, and to, to, to fit what image? The European standard. Mm -hmm. then, then there is the nigger mentality. Mm. The mere fact that we so quick to have cockroach and rats playing pan in all the empty conflicts, tin um, box and, 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 and corned beef um, tin and you have on the latest brands. Our parents are not giving us the boost so that when they die, we have six steps already to continue on. Mm. What is that? It is the nigger mentality. Mm. We are not addressing the word. So therefore, we are not researching as to what encompass all of that. Yeah. Therefore, it is a fly by night. It's, it's, it's just a word. If words were just words, pastors, preachers, singers, poets would not have a job. Ah, yeah, because yeah, wherever yeah. you go, you go there for that word. That's Something it. about that word yeah. gets Colliery. you up and moving. Reach me, and, and pull you. Exactly. And yeah. what is that? And what manifests these words? Your tongue. Yeah. That's we, why we, we practice calling each other king. Agreed. And we, we, we cut out the dog and the horse. And you know, I just want to cut you because I know you're going, eh? Sorry. Well, it's okay. Actually, I don't want to cut you, but uh, you keep stressing on that and I, I don't want to pass before I let it out. I have friends that up to today still can understand why I tell them when you're talking to me, you don't have kids. Yes, I learned that recently yeah. as well. You do, when you're talking to me, as Orisha Lashe, you don't have kids. You have yeah. children. Yes. Because mm -hmm. it's the same thing. No. If you tell me it's just a word, right? Mm -hmm. Then why I can get a hundred and twenty-five dollar charge if I say FCUK? Yes. <laughs> Which was my next point, yeah? Because when I was what I was was going to address is that words have no power. But no matter how angry you get, you can't say shut your mouth to feel good. You just need to say those four letters, mm -hmm. or you need any of the four letters. Mm -hmm. You just and when you hit that, you good. It is because. I learned that the English language was created, For right? A slave and language. they call it spelling, <laughs> right? When you understand that word, whatever letters you put together is like invoking or casting a spell. Mm. So we underline this, the, the seriousness. We don't want to get too deep because spirituality, anytime somebody speak about spirituality, they jump to Obia. And then we go running. Well, I saw Obia, man. Well, same here. You know and I play. from Aruba, so you know we day, we day, we day, we yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Me no no problem with being addressed as that or being looked at as that. Yeah. And then it goes into so much reteaching. I want to quote something, but I can't remember 
the person. Mm -hmm. However, the I think it was Willie Lynch. Lynch. Willie Lynch, yeah. Willie Lynch. He was a slave tamer in well, the West Indies. Thing, right? It has been proven mm -hmm. that that letter was not written in the time that they say it was written. It was written by a man, I can't remember his name now, he's still alive, mm -hmm. to show how effective what they were doing at that time was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not to take away from the contents of the Willie Lynch letter, mm -hmm. yeah. but Willie Lynch was not a real person. Mm -hmm. And that letter was not written in the 17th something when they say he come. Mm -hmm. um, and he might even show you it uh, in terms of um, how, he, how he addressed them by the, the date and time. Mm -hmm. right. On the banks or wherever, wherever, you know, it wasn't spoken like that at the time. Now. But it's not a takeaway for what he, from what he let us showing you. Because mm -hmm. that, I mean, if you, if you read that today, like, yo, that make real sense, boy. But the, I think the core part of what, one of the things that was quoted by him, he said, I would teach you how, how to, to, be, be a, to, how to groom a slave. How to make a slave. And eventually... The slaves will would do my work for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will say perpetually to yeah. we do it. And unfortunately, he's right. Yeah. I, I, I often think about the morals and values that persons in African homes teach. If I was never, to, I was never told I was worth 19 million. And that was when I was a baby. I probably worth more now, mm -hmm. right? Because I've grown. Yeah. So the melanin expands, right? right. If I, you could tell me that and I, somebody tell me I ugly, I say, you mad. <laughs> real, real, real mad. Yeah. Right? Nobody lighter or whatever could ever tell me that because I know my worth. Yeah. And I've studied my history. Yeah. So I know that I have a duty. Our, yeah. our, 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 our men are not protecting our women. And we see it every day when someone yeah, shows that up dead. That is real. That's another situation. Yeah. And it's sad part of that. Yeah. that and the sad part about it, there are men who know that. Yes. I listened to a story that my mother once told me about men in the... In, well, I'm from Maruga, so you know we're more rural than anything else. Mm -hmm. We're more traditional. Right. And men would hear their friends beating their wives and not say nothing. That is not your business. Mm. Then how? If it takes a village to raise a child, then what village is protecting that mm -hmm. child? Yeah. But we want to say these things when we are in the right and when we want to really um, project our reasoning for being violent or whatever. And it can be up and down. No, yeah. We need to understand what it is. And the sad part about it is that Trin Trinbegonians have adopted a mindset of copycat or the effect, the after effect of America's needs. Yeah, it's always said that. Always. So, while America was going through their process and whatnot, and nigger, nigger went from nigger, then they, then they, they said they were going to take it back. They, take, they wanted to take back the word. And I was with them on that. Right. Until they decided to formulate a new word, which is supposed to be acceptable, which is now N-I-G-G-A. That, that, so that's the good nigger, and the N-I-G-G-E-R is the bad nigger. Now, nobody outside of the race can use that word. So I started to think, what is this word? They say it's a term of endearment, and, word, and the word endearment means to show love and affection. So we went into the Pandora's box, and we create N-I-G-G-E-R. Went back into the same Pandora's box, and create N-I-G-G-A. <laughs> so just because the, the, the tree don't look poisonous, uh, it good. Yeah. That didn't make sense to me. Now, there's a percentage of America that doesn't agree with that because the, NA, the, the NAACP mm -hmm. actually hosted a ceremony of burying the wood. They literally put the wood in a coffin and there was a whole ceremony that buried it in it. But people who are running the slave mafia, because slavery still exists, it just removed from our hands and feet, but in our minds. Right, yes. And what they did is that they infused it in pop culture. Therefore, Whatever is popular will always sell. Mm -hmm. So here we have the rap music doing what it needs to do. And then it goes on and goes on and goes on and goes on. And here we are. And I remember 
watching a show, I can't remember it, Boondocks, mm -hmm. where Martin Luther King came, came back. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and he said, is this what I got licks for? Yeah. Is this what I what got beaten shot and for? shot yeah. for? Yeah. Is this what we went through? This is what we sat on the bus and walked? And is this all that we did this for? Mm -hmm. And the sad part about it is that you 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 don't want to hear the word but i don't think people understand where this word originate from the history that word have every slave lynch every rape happen every scientific experiment on because that's what i'll be calling while exactly. they do it exactly yeah. they sum it up to one word mm -hmm. i am not that and now we in a time now this is the thing if we were taught this because we are in a time where everybody wants to be king and queens everybody yeah. wants to be stunt and, 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 and the best man and whatever, whatever. So if you know that is the context of that word, I guarantee you no one would ever use it. Not in this social yeah. media era, yeah. right? And it goes so much more. I, I, I blame, I blame the, 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 um, the leaders of the, of the country. To an extent, I blame the artists of the country. I had a beautiful experience with um, Chief Leroy Clark. Mm. And if you have Chief ever of our met, tribe of one. yes, if you have ever met that man, yeah. he exudes yes. royalty, royalty, just sitting in just front of voice him, alone, yeah. alone. Yeah. And I remember when I, when my spiritual mother took me to him, because that was one of his apprentices in the arts and whatnot. I was like, who is this man? I don't know who he is. All I heard is that we go into Leroy Clark's mansion. I said, yeah, I go in. I want to see this. And while we were going there, she was telling us all about this. I was just like, I've never learned about him. Mm. I, and he's an Eforisha. Mm -hmm. I've never learned about him. I never learned about Kwame Ture in school. Um, they, they, Dr. Eric Williams, yes. Um, people who influence holidays, mm -hmm. yeah. But Not these the patriotic people, I never learned of singing Sandra, mm -hmm. right? And... I listened to the words of Nina Simone and she said it is, the, the, it is an artist's responsibility to reflect the times. Mm. And we are in a time where we are blinded by slavery because we are so up into the things of life and Man, no Jesus. value, no value at all. Mm. When it all boils down to it, this man sat down and spoke to us. And I remember recording probably a couple hours he invited me back to his home and for a personal conversation of a dream he had. I recorded that as well. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, do not come back to my home unless you have done what I've asked you to do. That is true. Two years <laughs> after, two years and a half or a year and a half, I returned fully accomplished. Mm -hmm. And the man said, let us drink. It was a mini celebration. Yeah. I was grateful for that because four, year, four months after he passed away, Yes. That is something you don't get. That is something much not much people yeah. can see. I can um, definitely attest to that because he was a friend of my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And I know him on that kind of level. Right? And I was by him very, very regular mm -hmm. in the last two, three years. Sometimes twice a week. Mm -hmm. And he was very big on conversing with us as young African, yes. especially men. Mm -hmm. And that word? Yeah, you can't use that. You can use that way. <laughs> right? Could never. Could never. Never. He exudes so much teachings and we don't and have that no more. You say something there. How come we, Leroy Clark, come from where he come from in Belmont? You always tell you. I'll show you in the mm -hmm. conversation. I'll yeah. tell you. Where he come from around the bridge and everything. To be a world-renowned artist. Poet, mm -hmm. author. Be like, a man shan is a man shan. Yeah. Right? Why oh, are we learning about him? Of course. Why would they teach us about that? Because his work speaks African truth. Mm -hmm. Same thing with singing Sandra. Though she was the queen of, of, of Calypso, reigning queen of Calypso, to, only, to be the only one to win twice, female. And whatnot. Um, um, if, I, if anyone came up and take her throne, I'm not sure, but that is what I know before she yeah, passed I don't away. I don't think. I don't think. I don't no, think. I don't think Caleb, so queen, yeah, I don't think nobody went it. No, no woman twice. went twice. Yeah. Right. And why was she not so highly revered? revered? 
in even in her passing days, I think for what she did for our culture and as a people, you could listen to ancient rhythms and not want to go and research anything. Hmm. You could listen to true colors and not understand what she was saying. What about empowerment? Mm -hmm. Empowerment itself spoke directly to the black man on you focusing on violence and this is what you can become. Mm. Um, um, for whom the bells tour, these songs. Now everybody know dignity, mm -hmm. but what about these? Mm -hmm. And dignity is her most popular song. No, I'm not taking nothing from that. But I'm saying she spoke so much. I think one of her last pieces, one of her last set of um, calypsos, just stuck to black consciousness, black consciousness, whether it was empowering women, whether it was taking children by the hand and say, we're doing this, what have you. And these people, um, Shadow, mm. Shadow album was called Obia, mm -hmm. right? No, <laughs> when you listen to Shadow's music and know where he came from and the history that is that created, why aren't, why aren't we not really studying these people? Well, yeah. we hear the approach in you. We could answer some of them questions, huh? yeah. right? Because what we know, mm -hmm. whether all they like it or not, plenty of all you. And I don't want to say it and sound like I'm talking to you directly, who might be listening. But we're talking about the power structure. Mm -hmm. They still have a colonial mind. Of yes. course. Right? Plenty of them know that. But that colonial mind and following massa trend give them a certain lifestyle. Correct. And they that they're not willing to let go up. of. Correct. The sad thing is they're training younger people to have that same mindset. Agreed. Yes. To carry it on. So we are just saying that coming out there. Yeah. One of the things we had to work on as a people is getting rid of, especially when it comes to politics. The old guard. Some of them, them old guard, that old way to call old guard, who have that mindset because they're talking a lot about education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? We have uh, political entities in this country that are predominantly African, that have been in power the majority of time, years, since 1956, mm -hmm. right? But our curriculum does not reflect that. Hmm. And I know data going to school just like this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. And someone told me... Yeah, let's take, we, 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 don't, don't go okay. there. Don't go there. We're yeah. taking our break all year yeah. and come back. <laughs> As how beautiful we are, for the beer of fire, yeah, yeah. Oh, the clothing line features t-shirts, checks, polos and shirts. Oh, a shaky lady v-neck, lady tank top and baby jeans, yeah. Dresses and cotton bags and hats and many more. Oh, oh, and the new big and experience. So we are back. We are back. Some beautiful African queens behind us here. Yes. All right, he just wanted to introduce some of his students. So would you like to go first? Look forward and go ahead. A pleasant good evening to one and all. Sure. My name is Kulisha Jones and I am eight years old. I am a baby dancer proudly representing Laudat Entertainment at Dynasty. 
Please enjoy the rest of this evening's proceedings. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. <laughs> It presents good evening to one and all. My name is Kamaya Guy and I am eight years old. I am a baby dancer proudly representing the Logan Entertainment Arts Dynasty. Please enjoy the rest of this evening proceeding. Bye. You're up. <laughs> it presents good evening to one and all. My name is Kamaya Curtis. I am six years old. I am a baby dancer proudly representing the Chicago and Furman and Youth Group. Please enjoy the rest of this evening. Thank you. And finally. A pleasant good evening to one and all. My name is Sophia James. I am five years old. I am a baby dancer. I am proud to represent Chicago and Woman. Woman and Youth Group. Thank you, ladies. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can pass back on this pass side. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it let's is, say if we don't involve the children. Yeah. We waste some time. Yeah. We waste some yeah, time. Yeah. I mean, what we gonna do? I guess we were just talking more before the break. Yeah. Yes. We're gonna do what we want to. Sit down here and do this when we's 90. Yeah. Because <laughs> something that I say a very unpopular position that I have. Mm -hmm. A certain Calypsonians. I went to the semi-finals, Skinner Park, for the first time in 2018. Yeah. What an experience. But something that stand out to me was certain elder Calypsonians still, still on stage. Yeah, still competing. Competing. Nice I have madness. a problem with that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> We we know where you where you have where you give already, you know. You don't win on everything already. You, know? yeah. you don't do everything involved in it already. But our system is not set up in such a way where we put you in an honorary position. Because mm -hmm. this is how I look at it. I should be going in there as a 20-year-old Calypsonian. Mm -hmm. And you in on a throne. And I come into you to ask you, okay. give me a little guidance now because you know I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. I, I mean skin and park is a big thing, right? It's toilet paper and all kind of thing it is getting in. <laughs> you know? Imagine I done nervous and everything already because as a 20 year old, this is my first competition. And I had to come up against you. Yeah. yeah. I find for me, yeah. that's just my personal opinion. I find that shouldn't be, but we still have that again, no structure in anything yeah. and no passing the battle. Yeah. Look, I love what you're doing, love that. Uh, thing. We, I don't even hear that. Mm -hmm. I I mean I watch the, the Calypso and the, the extremely popular soca artist and thing today. And I always look at Jamaicans. When I used to go and see Beanie Man and Bounty Killer and Sizzler in the late 90s and early 2000s, every, nearly every show I go to see them, they have a young artist I never hear about. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's on the artists to try and keep up that after they could come in their own concert. Right. Correct. But I guarantee that. But I just watch these soak artists on them today. International fame. Uh, I don't hear them picking up no young artists. Yeah. You know, it's a big up from a, a, a popular soak artist, boy. I really like what yeah, see Karen and that music he making more well, take him in. Mm -hmm. I don't even hear that. Far less for incorporating them in here. You yeah, know, sure. so that's it. without the only children we're wasting time. Yeah. It's sad because um I had to learn that and that's why if anyone who knows me as a dance teacher, they know if you call me to do a gig, I bring in my children. Right. I br you you and you will see we lining up. The money might you might say was Kenson, well, we the budget only cater for one. That's okay. We will use it for transport for everybody. Because what when you in African teachings, you know that like we use the seating structure. If a Babalao is sitting on this chair, you can't sit on the same chair with him. Mm -hmm. You have to take the floor because it brings humility. You have to know that that is a that is a stature. Yeah. That is that is an elevation. Post, yeah. Right? And you're not there. I have never sat on the same level with Leroy Clark. I have, we have all sat on the floor. And when you for a ballet, for, for a ballet you don't get up until he arrives you, uh, raise you up. Mm. And it's these little things, these little quote-unquote innuendos will teach us that we can apply it in every little thing. Mm -hmm. There is no, and bring, come in for the young artist because I want all for myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, the mindset may have reached to that point because they are not put in a place where they can say, well, I could retire now yeah. and groom yeah. and bring forth. Yeah. Well, I would, I, I would I, agree that last section mm -hmm. for the 20 before. years ago, the, okay. especially 
Calypsonians, yeah. where we know for sure they were only uh, making money most times during that carnival period. Okay. At him. But for Soka artists today, that's not, not true. That don't apply. You know, I, I, I see from my days working in the green phone company, <laughs> I see a crew come to pay the phone bill. And the figures on that phone bill and the ease at which they pay it says a lot. Yeah. You see, I mean, I, mean, you know? I work with um, certain big mass bands. Mm -hmm. and, when, and one one costume is $15,759. You know? So I, I'm saying, yeah, I'm it's saying easy, you know. It's real easy to flush out. Continuity. Yeah. In plenty of wee, wee things here. And then go back to where you're talking about education. We education system not providing. It not gaining nothing. I mean, we're not trying to do nothing different. There's no pride. There's no African pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no way to teach anything on African pride. The one holiday in the country that is attributed to African, but it's not an African holiday, which is Emancipation Day. I was going to say that. It's a go. celebration <laughs> yes. of the uh, commencement of the Emancipation, Emancipation. Act. Yeah. Important because they fight for it. And I know of right. I used to be angry at it. Yeah. But uh, uh, I have to respect that they fight for it. Yeah. Well, let me ask this. When is African History Month? In Trinidad is in November. How much people know that? Right. Hmm. And if something is not introduced or inducted in the educational system, then it's not taken seriously. It is not, yeah, not rooted. It's not rooted. Yeah, exactly. Because we would know when is emancipation, when is independence. We know these dates. Diwali. Di Diwali. Eid. Eid. <laughs> Eid. Eid. So this is what from the year before. Yeah, yeah. Right. This Easter. is what I'm going to bring up, right? Yeah. So every religious holiday, Christian religious holiday, or ethnic holiday, seems to fall at a time where we could celebrate it, right? Yeah. Is it that nobody in the school system, because I know, including my chief, mm -hmm. uh, Olaki Masatunji, uh, has been fighting since the 80s or the 90s to have Shango Day in Trinidad and Tobago, Shango being one of the patron deities in mm -hmm. Orisha, right? Mm -hmm. Fighting for that, right? Do the necessary paperwork, whatever, whatever. Now, I uh, met a new group of Orisha devotees. When I say new group, they're new to me. Right. Uh, but they have been around a while that actually working on that same thing, right? But there's no holidays for us to dress like that and go to school. Mm -hmm. okay. But we have holidays to dress in other ethnicities' ways, and I want to make it clear I have no problem with that. My problem, the only reason my daughter would not dress up like that to go to school, is because it have no point in time she could punch African clothes and go to school. Mm -hmm. But the day she could punch African clothes and go to school, better was some dollar. She could wear everything else. Yeah. I would disagree. I have a problem with it, and I have a problem with it because it's about time we have a problem with it. We have been here for way too long. I have seen my nieces dress up in saris and, and showers and everything else under the sun mm -hmm. and go to school, represent, have to learn what the day is, the food they eat, the, what they dress, what they like, everything else. And, and, and yes, they are, a country in Tobago is diverse. Yes. And it seems as though that when it comes to other ethnic groups, it's easy. It is. But when that it comes seems. to... Yes, when it comes to us, it is the most difficult thing yeah. there is. Yeah. How is, because I, I also learned that there was a partition to name um, the street on which um, Kwame Ture Oxford lived on. Street. Street. And, and the, 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 the politician who in a position that they have a name for in Port of Spain mm -hmm. to approve it saying no. Why? Exactly. But we got Chinatown real quick. Real, real right. easy. Real quick. Easy. And, I, and people have a tendency to list African descent people as controversial, but this is what we endure. But there's no controversy in that. The that. thing is, when we say it, it's like, oh gosh. Yeah. This should not be an oh gosh. Yeah. This should be, okay, I understand. Yeah. I, I, I know you need to. Why is it, for example, our African practices are still being feared, but then there are other ethnic groups who practice similar or who do similar. Very similar. Very yeah. similar, and it is appraised. Yes. It even our holidays fit. Very much so. Yeah. Right? Because right now we're in March, and a particular holiday is coming up on the 30th of this month. Mm -hmm. And you know everybody's going to be in yes. their head wrapped and their candles lit and whatnot. And it seems as though that, you know, you hear that. 
you know, the, the purge siren just go off mm -hmm. to run inside. And I'd, <laughs> I'd be like, it, it make it make sense to me. Make it make sense to me that why we are only good enough when you need a particular set of work done. Yeah. At that point in time, you ain't fair. You walk bare feet with clothes, no shoes, shoes on, you're going. Because you, yeah, you need to get your fix done. But after that, that, after that, in sunlight, we go back. Being, we're yeah. going back. This bar, I, I actually have tell someone personally close to me that. Yeah. that every, things are happening, thing, you end up right. But all the time you're saying before, you get through your fix, but then you go back to saying, right? But even to add to it, how do we, so what we, one of the things we do with the program is, you know, after we talk all that talk, solution. we want to offer ideas for solutions. Okay. Right? So you are a, well, I see, I, I think there's many things, so I don't want to label <laughs> it as one, but poet, dancer, teacher, every, right. And you focus on, you have a, a dance school? Yes. And you teach children? Yes. Right. Offer us a solution or two mm -hmm. from your perspective on how do we improve yeah. African lives in Trinidad and Tobago. And when they finish, you will tell you the viewers and how, them to, how to get onto your school. Yeah. Sure, no problem. And how to enroll and that kind of thing, right? Well, to begin with, um, my company was, our, found, our foundation have infused the arts and African awareness. Right. So my colors are black, gold, and white. Black is for black teachings, black consciousness, black awareness. Mm -hmm. So ever so often we give children quotes from African persons so that they keep that into them. And when our culture is so very much well rooted, because most of our culture, when you see the dances and whatnot, it's African influence or, or it's influenced by some other um, um, place that, that was um, ruling Trinidad at the point in time, but they influenced the Africans, mm -hmm. right? If, when you look at Carnival and the word Juve, and you know, it's from the French or whatever the case may be. So what I do, I use those moments to teach. Because when you teach someone about how the ballet dance came to be, it's because the slaves were looking onto the French maidens and see what they did and they incorporate that. Gives me an avenue to speak about slavery. Mm -hmm. When I want to talk about Leroy Clark or, or singing Sandra, because every month we, tweet, we speak about a specific artist, right. we have to highlight who they are because they are national treasures. Yes. So it, it, I'm not doing anything wrong. And I'm not nitpicking or anything like that. But I can teach you about somebody else who not going to benefit you in a teaching process. I right. need to teach you about you first. Right. Then we could learn about anyone else. So I use the arts as an avenue to introduce to persons carefully, because some, some parents might be a little iffy with their faith, and I didn't send my child to do that, I sent my child to do this and that, but if you send them to do this, this is what this is. Mm -hmm. It just gives me an opportunity to teach you now, yeah. because you are none the wiser. Right. So, Solutions start at home. Sure. We need, as, as African people, we need to do proper research. And don't let any, anybody tell you who you are. Yes. You need to be able to know who you are. Because somebody could tell you who you are and they would they would feed you jigaboo. Right? Because uh, <laughs> when I was talking about this topic, someone told me, no, the word nigger didn't come from that. It, um, it came from the African country, Niger. Uh, who named it Niger? That's oh. not even the African exactly. name for it, right? Oh, so and I want to jump in quick because sure. we, we, we so, oh, run yes. out of time. Yeah. But that is why, you know, I will always love Thomas Sankara because when oh, he took dupes. over <laughs> Upper Volta, right. he renamed the first thing he did. Is renamed the country. Right. Yeah. Burkina Faso, land of right men. Mm. Tell the people watching on how to contact you and your business. You can find me on Instagram as his.majesty for Shola. Ah, sure. um, you can also find my company page that is lead um, 202TT on Instagram. And our second branch in my hometown, Muruga, you would find lead underscore Muruga. And for CWIG, which is another company I also teach, um, you can find them at CWIG on Instagram as well. And you can find all of us on Facebook with the same uh, name tag. Any phone number? numbers? Oh, okay, give me a phone number. Afraid wrong people. No, no, no. My number is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't call him, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a man. Send him a message on Facebook and Instagram. 
because you know yeah, yeah, yeah. we have to yeah. be safe in this yeah time, we right? have we to be safe no freak call and anything right? because i mean one thing i want to say before we close off we have enough time yeah for a final statement oh, final, right. statement, final yeah. statement is that when persons like myself and us speak we are in danger because someone do not want this to come out yeah hmm. but i will <laughs> add to that because i agree yeah um especially after listening to my chief um we can't afraid. We can't fear them. No. Right? At half times we have to speak, and that's what the opportunity view is about. Correct. All your love of self is the answer. Right? Support of self and kind is the answer. You know, one of the things that we talk about in it, any any uh, I am not a nigger. Is I am not a nigger? I'm not a nigger. Unchained. Right? Unchained, is, Unchained right? is the title, yes. yes. Right. Um, we don't support it enough. Yeah. Right? We want to support everybody else thing. And then I just talk it plain because that is what I do, and I sell and close it like you know. It, you you more comfortable. Think about how brainwash is. So we are white man name across here, as opposed to something that represents you as a person. Just think about that. Who degrade second. us? Right up to this day. Yeah. So, love more life, more love. All you give yep. chance be safe out there. Right. We going. Thanks for watching. All you we go link again. Yes, man.